Hey guys, how are you today? So this is going to be a little crochet tutorial. Simple. Don't don't let that freak you out. This is really simple stuff. Um, you really don't have to know lots about crocheting to do this, I swear. Um, I showed a picture on Pinterest recently, and I'll try to include it right here. Not on Pinterest, I'm sorry. On social media, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I'll try to put it right here. where I had made a bunch of these little um, um, tied and crocheted bracelets and I showed them stacked up on my arm, a whole bunch of them at once. I really like the way that looks and I know there's lots of companies out there that do these little like friendship type bracelets and they're really pretty but they're really expensive. And I wanted to try to incorporate some of the bits and pieces that I already had and some things that you guys have sent me into something that I could like wear and take around with me. So that's what I did and I made these last night just in a few minutes. Um, so I thought I would, um, this is one that I already had that was store bought and I used it as inspiration for, to make these. I don't remember where I got this. I know somebody's going to ask me and don't remember. Um, and and these are nothing like this. I used this as inspiration and, and for measurements, but that's about it. Um, anyway, I th these were so popular in the post that I made last night, I thought I'd get on here and show you guys how to make some of these. And we'll do the basic one first. Um, and by basic, I mean this one. Now, you could just do a bunch of these plain ones like this, and you could just do a whole bunch of these in different colors. And you could just stack them on your arm. They'd be they'd be really cute. So I have to do it with my teeth, but you just pull these two ends, and it tightens up the bracelet. Now I don't like my bracelets too tight, but you're gonna make them for you and how they fit you. And I, you know, and they these will just dangle in the back. Um, you can do, I did this one the same way as these, only I put a piece of ribbon in there as I was crocheting and then it came out actually a little bit big so I tied two knots in it and I really like the way that turned out. And you can just keep stacking them up all different colors. Right? And you can also do some, like I did this one, this is a little piece of lace that was in my grandmother's sewing box when she passed away. So I didn't know what to do with it, so I took it and I um, made it into one of these bracelets by using it as the base and then just crocheting down the sides. And I'm going to show you kind of how I did that too. And you just stack them up. Here's one that I made. And this metal piece was gifted to me, um, I think in a pocket letter. Um, I don't remember now because now I've taken everything apart. I don't remember. It was either in Happy Mail or, or a pocket letter. And I did something similar to the lace piece and I just crocheted around it and attached it. And this metal piece had two holes on each side. So it was really easy to crochet up to the holes, at, you know, crochet through the holes. I did some crocheting across the back and then out the other side. If you crochet, you know what I mean. This is one that I made using some paper beads that Miss Peta sent me kind of quite a while back. They've been floating around my studio begging for me to do something with them. And you just, and they look really great stacked up, stacked up. This is one made with a bead somebody gifted to me in Happy Mail again quite a while ago and I honestly don't remember who gave me the bead but it's just gorgeous. It might have been Secret Soto. I don't know, it might not have been. If it's you, please speak up. I love the bead. I have loved the bead and it's, again, been begging for me to do something with it. So then you just stack them up and you can put as few or as many as you want. And they're a really cute uh, look, I like them. So I'm gonna take all these off now that I did that. And I'm gonna show you first how to do a basic one. And then I'm going to show you how to incorporate some beads. I have some paper beads and some glass beads. I have this, which is, uh, I'm going to do the same way I did this bigger one. This smaller one only has one 
um, loop on each side, but this again, this I know was in a pocket letter. Somebody gifted me. I'm going to need so I, some cotton or embroidery floss. Now I happen to have crochet cotton. This is uh, number 10 crochet cotton, either DMC or uh, Flora. Some of this is Lisbeth, I think, which is an Egyptian cotton. Um, these are kind of high-end crochet cottons, um, but you can just use embroidery floss. You don't have to have crochet cotton. I also have been playing with using some of the embroidery floss and things you guys have been sending me, um, and some of the like twine and things that have been wrapped around some of the packages you guys have sent me, so you could do that too. You're going to need a couple of crochet hooks. Now, um, for most of the crocheting, I am using a crochet hook size F. This is a metal F boil needle. Boy, boy. I don't have my glasses on. Boy. <laughs> B O Y E. And then this is a smaller Bates steel hook. This is uh, a number seven. Now you want something that's really teeny like this, um, or maybe even smaller, because sometimes you're going to have to reach into your beads to grab the thread and pull the thread through. So you're going to want a crochet hook that fits inside your bead. This bead may be a little small for this hook. I might have to, if I decide to do this one, I might have to use a different hook. Um, I also have some paper beads out here. Now, I've been gifted and or made a lot of paper beads over the years, and I think I would do these a little bit differently, but they would be interesting on a bracelet too. So we'll see if, I don't know if I'm going to do these today, but we'll see. First, let's just do a basic one, and I want to do... I think I want to do, I didn't do very many blues last night, so I think I want to do some more things in blue. Um, let's take this turquoise color, because I really like this color. And you can combine colors, or you can just use the one color. I, um, but you're going to probably want to use about three strands. Uh, did I stop to get my needlework scissors before I did this? Of course not. <laughs> Why would I do that? All right, so we'll do first a basic one. So you're going to want to do a slip knot. I'm going to zoom in so you can see me a little bit clearer. Okay, so first you want to do a slip knot. Yeah. Again. So do that and then pull the thread through. Slip knot. Um, you want to leave a tail about like this. Put your crochet hook in the knot, in the loop, and then pull, and it should tighten up around the crochet hook. Yeah? Then you want to take your crochet hook, and you want to pull your thread through the loop on the hook, keeping a fair amount of tension on the bottom here and on this thread. One, two, three, four. You want to do this about... Well, it depends on how long you want your bracelet. So you want to do it between 20 and 30 times, okay? I'm actually going to start a little bit farther back because my actually my thread might be not a little bit long enough. You might you want to have about 18 inches to 24 inches of thread. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, whoops, 14, 15, 16, yeah, see, it's not long enough. All right, let's do that again. I'm going to do about two feet, two to three feet of thread times three. All right, let's try that again. We're going to use this. Don't, don't worry about this going to waste because it's not going to go to waste, and I'll show you why in a minute. So, again, we're going to do a slip knot. 
stick my crochet hook in there. When you do your last stitch, pull the thread all the way through and then just yank on it and pull it tight and you'll have something that looks like this. Yeah? So then you're going to cross it over. Whoops. All right. So you're going to cross it over like this. Then you're going to take another piece of thread, which is what we're going to use this for. Now, last night I just held on to this and did this, but um, I think you should just put a couple of little binder clips here. Or clothespins to just hold everything out of your way. And then wrap this other thread around these, this here, uh, three or four times. All right. One, two, three. And you know this is only this difficult because I'm doing it on camera. Last night I had no problem. <laughs> all right, then I'm going to give it kind of a yank and squish all those wraps like together so that you have something that looks like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to tie it in a knot. Always tie three times and then clip. Take your binder clips off and then take your two ends that are hanging out on each side, the two loose ends. You can't leave them like this because when you go to adjust your bracelet and put it on and take it off, it'll pull right out of that little knot that you made right here it would pull right out. So what you want to do is you want to take your thread ends and you want to tie them in a knot. Plus you have a bunch of multiple ends of thread here and that's just, you don't want that either. So tie it off. A few times. Try it over this, tie it a few times in the same place so that you get kind of a big knot. And also don't tie your tails too short. You want to leave an inch or two um, so that you have room to slide the bracelet on and off. You don't want to make it too small. And I found that tying the um, thread ends three times gave me a nice big size knot. And then I'm going to trim it. Okay. So then you have a what? Then you have a bracelet, just plain. Yeah. So the other thing I do is I take this is called fray check. This is by Dritz, and this is in the sewing notions of any fabric or craft store. Um, you could use fabric glue, you could use crazy glue, you could probably use Elmer's. Just use something that dries clear, put it on the knots that you made, on the center knot and on each end, 
Um, that'll keep things from coming undone and coming unraveled. Don't put so much glue on the center knot that you glue everything together and it doesn't slide um, open and closed because that would be bad. And then I've just been taking them and clipping them to the hooks above my desk until they dry. All right, now let's make one with a little piece of lace in it. I have a few different selections. Let's see. And I kind of think I really want to, um, I want to use this one too. This is from Happy Mail from, I think from Victor. These are some more little pieces from my grandmother's um, box of uh, stuff. That I guess some little pieces of projects that she never finished. Um, I'm really kind of feeling the piece from Victor. So when I did this one, I used um, a piece of um, my grandmother's lace and I basically just crocheted on each side and then I finished the back the same way I did the other one. Um, on this one, I think we're going to do it a little bit differently. So let's see. So I'm going to cut off about seven inches of lace. I was measuring it there a little bit off camera. My table has a grid on it. Oops. See? So I was measuring it to the side. And I just took a seven inch piece. I like that. Um, And I want to incorporate the, rate this with some other stuff too, I think. I think I'm going to use this color. And maybe this color. I might have purple like this somewhere. Let me go look. I'll be right back thought I might. It's almost an exact match. So this is definitely, these little ones are Lisbeth size 10 Egyptian cotton, crochet cotton. Um, you can use it actually for tatting, knitting, or crocheting. I use it for crocheting little doilies and little projects like this. Comes in a million different colors. Um, all right. So I do want to incorporate some of this purple into this. Yeah, so I'm going to use two neutrals and the purple. I mind about the design of this bracelet because midway I decided I didn't like what was happening, but I also decided that I had something that I thought would be better. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to start again with a crochet of two. Yep. And I'm going to pull the whole entire long tail through that, that crochet too. Not that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing. Then I'm going to take the, not the short end here. Okay, not the short end here. This is the crocheted piece, not the short end, this longer end. And I'm going to, using the crochet hook as a tool, I'm going to weave it in and out the holes of the center hole of the lace. Okay. I'm going to do about one, two, three, four, maybe five of them. And then I have these little metal roses that were gifted to me.
these. They're teeny tiny little metal roses. And I, they won't fit on all of these strings of yarn, but they will fit on one. So I'm going to try to thread it through. Oops. Keeping in mind which top of the flower is the top part, weave it down into one ring across the back side of the metal flower and up into the other side so that when it lies flat on the bracelet the rose is facing up because that would be important and then slide it down I like that. And then I think what I want to do is put a knot You should probably use your binder clips to hold this like together so it doesn't slide around. Those of you who know how to macrame probably are already screaming that at the camera. I haven't macrameed since I was a teenager, so it's, that's it was a long time ago. <laughs> so I'm gonna just tie a knot there so it doesn't slide down too far. I like that. And then I'm gonna keep weaving. Make sure I catch all of the threads of yarn. There we go. Oops. The trick to knitting or crocheting with multiple threads is to hold them all together and treat them as if they're one big piece of thread or yarn. All right. So then I'm going to keep doing that all the way across until I get about five from the end over here. And then I'll show you how we're going to finish it. I'll be right back. Somebody gifted these to me and I don't know who, but... Oops. There we go. So now we're going to tie this in a knot here. If you're the one that gifted them to me, thank you. Because they're really pretty. Okay, pull it tight. There we go. Then I'm going to keep weaving this all the way through to the end. Oops. that again. There we go. This last one does not want to stay up right there we are. So I'm going to keep weaving.
The, what did I just say about the last one always being the most difficult? There we go. <laughs> Alright, so then I'm going to put another clip right here because I don't want this to slide around or get tight or do something funky while I'm finishing the bracelet. And then I'm going to put a slip knot right here next to the lace, hopefully. Take a little maneuvering to get the slip knot to be kind of close to the lace. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'll stick my hook in there. That's pretty good though, so it's right up there against the lace. And then again, I'm going to chain two. Just like I did in the beginning, and then I'm going to pull the tail end through and pull it tight. Take my clips off. That's going to be cute. Alright, I'm going to take this and okay, when you're doing this, make sure that your lace doesn't get twisted. Cross over your threads just like we did with the first one and put a clip on each side. Okay, now one of these tails is really long, so I'm going to clip it shorter, and that's what we're going to use to make our little center pull knot. And we're going to wrap it around three or four times. One, two, Three. I think I'm going to just do three because there's a lot of yarn here. Okay. I'm going to pull it tight and then tie it in a knot. Try not to throw your scissors in the trash can. Cut your little ends. Take your clips off. Okay. All right. Make sure you didn't do it wrong. Okay, and then tie knots in your ends. Two or three times to get yourself a big knot. And trim. Again on the other side. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's try that again. It's just because I'm on camera, you know, because, you know, we're filming so things aren't working right. Okay. And then trim. And then don't forget to put your fray check on your knots. Okay. And that's going to be a cute one and that can that can dry. That's going to be really cute, especially stacked.
Okay, let's do another one. I'll show you how to do a basic bead one. And this one and this one are done in a similar fashion. This just has two strands because it had four holes on each side of the bead. And you can see that I ran the chains across the back of the metal piece. I you know, crocheted up to the hole, crocheted through the hole, across the back, out the other hole, and down the side. And I just did it twice and then tied them in a knot right here. Um, this one's done in a similar fashion with just one bead. Um, and this one was done the same as this one, only with three beads. So, and I actually have an idea for another one. Let's do one with the paper beads. We can do one with just thread first, too. I don't know. Let's see. Do I have any long? This is not too long. Oh, I have these. Yeah, this will work. So we'll use these. These are left over from the purple one that we just did. Um, I'm going to cut, I'm going to, I doubled it over and I'm going to cut them so I have multiple strands here. And then I'm going to take some of these paper beads that I have. And I'm going to pick a strand of thread out of the stack. And I'm going to do three beads of a similar color on each, on separate strands. These ones that, are, that I'm picking are kind of a brown and cream and taupey colors. And then I have these green ones. Oh heck, I might wait, I might use all of these beads. So I'll pick a different strand, and I'm going to string three more. Maybe, because you know, I still don't have those reading glasses. It's not like they're far away, they're just on the other side of the room. Now if you have paper beads that have a really tight hole, or you're having trouble with your thread, you may need to do this with a needle. This crochet cotton seems to be doing pretty good though. Okay. And then another one. You could mix the colors up and just do them real randomly too. It just depends on what you want to do. one more set of beads. I'm going to pull out some blue. I'm going to just add some plain strands. I 
in similar colors. I've got some green here. I'm going to add some green to this. And I've got this kind of rusty reddish orange color. This is what a design I thought of last night that I didn't make. It. I thought of after I went to bed. So I like that, and they're all like grouped together. And you could do this with beads on like every strand. Instead of just beads on some of the strands, it just depends on what you want to do. Now I'm going to just tie a knot in one end. Yep. I want to pull all these strings kind of tightly so nothing is too loose. I'm going to measure again about seven inches. One, two, about there. And I want to tie another knot. You know, the length that you do this is going to depend on how, you know, big you want your bracelet or you, how you don't. You know, depending on if you have little wrists or big wrists. And see that? That's cute. That's cute. All right. So then the I the thing is what to do with all these strands? Do we leave them? I think we're going to just leave them. And we're going to wrap them around each other like we did before. We're going to clip them with our little binder clips. Got to catch all of the threads in this or it's not going to work. There was no crocheting involved in this one, you notice. <laughs> I'm going to take one of my colors of yarn and I'm going to just use the dark brown because I think that would be the easiest. And I'm going to double it and then double it again so I have four strands. And just like before, I'm going to wrap and tie, just like I did before. You're just doing it over a lot more strings of yarn than we were doing the first time or the second time. Okay, I'm going to pull it tight. Oops. Not losing anything. There we go. And tighten the knot. Give it a trim. Take off your binder clips and take one side and tie all of these strands together in a knot. Make sure you catch them all. It might be a little bit challenging because there's a lot of strands. There we go. I'm just going to do it twice or the knot's going to be gigantic. Okay, and then the other side. 
This is a cute one, and look at that, and it's got all these really great um, paper beads on it and things that um, I've either made or been gifted. I love that. It's always the last one. Why is it always the last one that gives you like the most commotion, the most problem? One's going to need more of a haircut than the others. Okay, then some free check. I need kind of a lot on these ginormous knots. So you want to make sure they're like glued and sealed shut. Cool. That one's going to be really pretty. I'm going to hang that up. Alright. So let's do one more. I'm going to give you an idea of how to do a basic one like this. We're going to use all the blues, I think, together. I think just the blues. I've got three different shades of blue here that I pulled out of my stash last night. Okay, so I'm going to start with about, I don't know, six or eight inches, and then I'm going to make my slip knot. tight on the hook. I'm going to crochet 10 chains. That's what this is called. One, two, three, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I'm going to take my little jewelry piece that I was gifted and I'm going to switch hooks so I can get this littler one through one of these loops. Oh, it doesn't fit. I need a smaller hook. Hang on, let me get one. I got a smaller hook. This one is a... It says it's a 7. But so does this one. I don't know. I just know it fits. <laughs> that one doesn't fit. So I'm going to stick it through the hole on the jewelry piece and I'm going to grab all my crochet threads and I'm going to pull them through. There we go. Then I'm going to switch back to the hook that I'm doing the crocheting with which is bigger. And I'm going to do about 10. That's actually way too many. Let's do five. You want to do just enough to reach that other loop across the back. That's too many.
So just eyeball it and see how far you get. Yeah, five is good. So we're going to do five. Then we're going to switch back to the little hook again so we can pull our threads through the uh, loop on the jewelry piece. Just take your time and... Oh, there we go. Pull everything tight and taut. And so that's 15. So let's do 10 more. Eight, nine, ten, and then we're going to cut off another like six or eight inches and pull it through that last loop all the way and then pull it tight. That's a good, just basic um, bracelet. And that's how I did this one, only I did it twice because there's two uh, rows of loop. Uh, rings on this metal piece. So I did it once across the bottom, then I did it once across the top, just like this, and then I took the two and tied them in knots right here, and then finished the back of the bracelet just like I did the other ones. I'm going to show you how to do one of these kind now. We've, I've shown you how to do the back a number of times, so we're good there, I think. So this one, I'll do one with this glass bead. And let's do another blue one, because I didn't do that many blue ones last night. And maybe instead of this dark blue, we'll throw in a little bit of the pink. Oops. Okay. So maybe we'll throw in some pink. Pink would be cute with this one. And, yeah, I like that. And let's put the green, let's put a green in. Let's do four. All right, so for this one, again, we're going to start with six or eight inches and we're going to do a slip knot. I'm going to crochet. I want this to be in the middle, and I like the bracelets to be, like I said, between 25 and 30 stitches. So, um, we're going to do like 12. Ten, eleven, twelve. Then we're going to take our loop and we're going to make it really big. I'm going to take our little hook. We're going to stick it through the bead. We're going to grab the threads and we're going to slide the bead over the hook and pull those threads all the way through the bead. Except I missed one. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. Through the bead, through the yarn, pull the yarn through the bead. I still missed one. Maybe this hook, I need to go to this hook. I have smaller hooks. All right. That one's really little. Okay. There we go. All right, so you want to have it like that, yeah? Then we're going to put our big hook back in here and we're going to pull this tight. So it's like that. Then we're going to crochet 12 more. One, and that first one's going to look like this, yeah? Two, three, Four, oops. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve.
12. Then you're going to cut off your 6 to 8 inches and you're going to pull it all the way through and then you have one with a bead on it and you're going to finish it the same way as you, we've done the others and that's how you get this one. Oh, what else do I have here? How about... I have all these charms I thought I might use. So when you do the paper, one like the paper bead, instead of doing paper beads on the, on the strings, you could hang charms off of them. Um, you could do small seed beads. You could do medallions. You can do a combination of things. I have this little piece of lace. This is from my grandmother's stash of stuff. So let's see if we can do something with it. I'm thinking I want to bring in some of my blues. I'm going to get rid of all these little tail thread ends. I've got this pile here. I should put it out for the birds to make a nest. Okay. So I'm going to not even try and match this yarn because it's faded and worn that's in this little crocheted piece. It's, um, it's never going to happen. So I'm going to get some pieces I think would complement it. A couple of blues. I've got a, a tan color. I think they go really nice. Do I want to add the purple? I don't think I want to add the purple. I think I want to do these. I'm going to start with, again, six to eight inches. We're going to do a slip knot. Then we're going to crochet five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to stick my hook into one corner or end of the little crocheted piece. And I'm going to pull the yarn through the crocheted piece and the loops. I don't think I won't. Yeah, I did. And then I'm going to do one, two. And let's see. No, I don't want to do one, two. going to go from the bottom up through the top of the crocheted piece and I'm going to, the loop is still on the hook and I'm going to pull some threads through again from the top to the bottom. So you have it like that. And then I'm going to do five more. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to cut six to eight inches off. and pull them through. So you have this. Do it again for the other side. This is how I did the other one, the other piece of lace. Each lace is going to be a little different how you attach your chains, but basically Two, three, four, five. Up the corner first. Let's see. No. So the only trick is to remember which um, way you did it the last time so that it comes out looking the same on the other side. If, if that's going to bother you, if it doesn't look the same, it would bother me. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to go a little farther down and bring my hook up from the bottom. 
pull my threads through the lace and through the loop on the crochet hook. And then one, two, three, four, oops. Pull your threads through. And then you have this, which is how I made this one. And then you just tie the little sides into a knot. Now on this one, I think I want to hang some of these charms and things off of here. So I've got a few different things and I'm thinking, which one do I want to hang? Maybe this one. This is from my grandmother's stash. I'm thinking it's either the Tree of Life. I think I want to hang that one. So I'm going to take some more of the same colors of thread I was just using. myself a tail because I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to finish this. When I did this one I just did it plain and you could definitely do that and leave it like this and then finish off the sides in the back and that would be fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie these together. I could do that. I could just literally just attach it with some of those same colored threads. That sounds like an interesting idea to me, so let's try that. I'm going to put it through the medallion first. This happens to be, it looks like St. Francis. My grandmother used to make rosaries, so she's got all these little she had all these medallions hanging around. I don't have my glasses on, I can't read it, but it looks like it might be St. Francis. So I'm thinking of right here in the center. I poke a hole with a crochet hook and pull some of the threads through. Oops. Medallion came off. Might be okay though. Okay. So now we have this, like this, okay it's been a delay of interruptions, detours, and unexpected events, holy cow. So I was in the middle of finishing this one when people started coming home from work, and my husband specifically. So I had to stop filming, but I went ahead and tied the medallion to the center of the lace piece. I just tied it. I pulled the th thread, some of the same crochet threads I used for the strap through the center of the lace and used it to just put some knots here and tie the medallion on. And then I did put some fray check on here, just like I did on everything. 
I finished up the backs just like we did on all the other bracelets. So that is how you do some of these with the antique lace pieces. And then I showed you how to do the plain ones. We did this new one with the paper beads, which I just love, and I can see me making some more of these. I did this one, which is a takeoff on the plain one with a piece of ribbon woven in it and some knots. I showed you how to put beads on it. I showed you how to put some of these um, jewelry pieces, these medallions on. And then we also did this new one, which I really love too. So I hope that gives you some ideas of what you can do to make yourself some interesting bracelets with bits and pieces you have laying around, things people have given you, and that sort of thing. Just have some fun with it and you know, layer them one on top of each other. I'm going to make some more of these just plain ones to layer in between some of these other things. And I... Oh, I have so many plant. I have so many bits and pieces. I can just keep going. So with that's this. it for today. You can find all of my copyright notices and disclaimers in the description below, along with my contact information. If you want to get a hold of me for any questions, comments, concerns, or maybe you wanted me to review a product that you have, uh, and you or you want to send me something in the mail, my post office box is in the description below. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a good day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later.